DXB Today celebrating Earth Day today on DXB. I said today lots of times there, haven't I? Anyway, you get the idea. Uh, it is a big old focus on all things, well, the planet at the moment, planet versus plastics. Uh, how do we find common ground between the two? Well, we bring into the studio several uh, pioneers in this field, those that are campaigning uh, for a better understanding, those that are also giving us products that do exactly that, including our next guest, the co-founder of Palmade Biodegradable Products. It is Lamise Al Hashmi, Hashimi uh, joining us now. Uh, Lamise, thanks so much indeed for being Thank with us. Thank you for having me. Lovely to see you. I just want to get your thoughts on Bloom Spoon first at least. So, uh, would you be a fan of a seed sprouting spoon? Has that got potential? I'm a fan of anything that is an alternative to single-use plastics. So this is what we're here for, to look for solutions so that we could avoid um, the plastic pollution that we're all trying to uh, face. Um, our products are, they don't bloom or sprout. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they are made from the fallen date palm leaves. Mm. So the whole idea of our products was to look for a local resource that can solve a global problem. Mm. Um, and when we were able to uh, create a material with the uh, date palm leaves, uh, we, the first thing that came to our mind was, can we turn this into a spoon? Because if we does, if we can, sorry, um, it functions like plastic, it looks like plastic, but it biodegrades. Yeah. And that would be a solution to a, to a problem we're all facing. And which products do you have at the moment? What have you? At the moment, we manufacture cutlery, yeah. so the whole, the whole range, and straws. Uh, our R&D is currently into uh, plates and cups and uh, takeaway containers. Um, but we look at our, our, um, our company as a materials company because the invention is really in the material. Mm. And um, it can be turned into other products that are used for a short period of time and then discarded. Mm. And so um, we'd like, you know, we hope that we can go beyond um, the cutlery and the F&B uh, industry into other areas as well. Yeah, that is interesting because usually when you think about biodegradables, you'd hear about bamboo and sucker yes. and all these things. So now you have something that's locally sourced. Yes. Wonderful. Now, I'm a big fan of biodegradable products. It's a staple for me whenever, whenever I have friends over. But I noticed that there are still a lot of people who would rather use like foam, styrofoam, plastic, what do you think is a challenge of convincing these people to switch to biodegradable? I think old habits die hard. And so people are used to the, uh, the price of plastics or the styrofoam that you mentioned. Um, however, with time, we do see that uh, the shift in mindset is happening and there are more uh, available um, replacements to, to plastics. So we are seeing the trend moving in a positive way, uh, but I believe that's going to take some time. Since you talked about the change of mindset, yes. I just wanted to see, is uh, the F&B business actually taking that step or yeah. is it still going to take them a while? I mean, it's a struggle every I day, know. I have to say. Uh, but <laughs> is we're, it a fight like, that you have to do? Yeah, you, Ma, I wouldn't use the word fight. Uh, I, would, I would just say it's, it's awareness. So we need to first, you know, um, talk about the impact that the plastic is having. Yeah. and also talk about the intangible value and the goodwill that they'd be showing to their customers um, by switching to eco-friendly alternatives. Yeah. Because I've always said that the end user is ready. They're expecting that. Uh, but it's the business owners and the hotel operators that need to pioneer and, and make that, that step um, in their decision making. Is that something, Maz, that you try and get across through the climate club you know, you know we were talking just a minute ago that you, you, know, you think there needs to be more need for education as well um, is it integral that we sort of get the message across to the younger generation to all generations uh, yeah I think the younger generation are keen and interested to learn um, so actually one thing that I'm part of is this TikTok um, verified champion scheme where we try and communicate through TikTok to the younger generation about climate issues and the response I get on there is actually it's really nice um, you know people very interested and curious to learn more um, so the younger younger generation are feeling empowered and ready I think to make these choices but I think it's also an accessibility issue right you talked about the F&B business not necessarily being ready to provide that um, but also you know is your product available in, in supermarkets here or how do people get hold of it yeah so at the moment we're B2B so we're supplying to uh, businesses but uh, we do have a plan platform on Amazon mm -hmm. um, and, and it, it takes time. It takes time for people to actually 
think about you know using something different and then searching for it um, but we, we are seeing I mean the governments luckily for us here in the UAE are pushing for this you know they're they're mandating for it so it's definitely around everyone's minds at the moment uh, and we're hoping that would just increase with time it's earth hour or day day, day. day. <laughs> it's earth day uh, but so I, I want to do a little earth day moment we're going to take advantage of earth day um, to look into our sustainable crystal ball at the moment uh, and look towards the future and make a bit of a pledge ourselves. Is there's one pledge, Lamise, that you would like to see or li would like to make today or it, something you'd like to see change that you think would have momentum changing the mindset that you've been talking right. about there and making a difference? What would it be? I, w I would say to um, waste less. I think to be a lot more conscious about how much we actually need in terms of all the resources around us. Mm. I think having that mindset of really n believing that you could get by with a lot less. And that means waste across the board? Across the board. Okay, yeah, yes, so food, yes. um, clothes. Energy, yeah. all of it. All yes. of it. Yeah. I mean, I was just in, um, in Africa actually, and actually to see the amount that people actually consume on a day-to-day -day basis compared to us is mm. quite staggering. Um, so I think travel is a great way of people, you know, building that awareness. But do you guys do any kind of marketing or how do you educate your consumers? Um, at the moment, I mean, we, we try, we're a startup. Mm. So, and we're, we're local. Uh, we have not yet embarked on, on going internationally. Um, we, we try to go through the different channels, the social media and uh, the traditional marketing ways. Mm. Uh, but, but definitely, I, I mean, I agree with you. We need to, to spread the word yeah. to, to everywhere else. Yeah. Maz, come on. Uh, we've heard Lamusa's pledge. What would be? What would you like to see change? Um, I think people just reading and learning more. You know, it being built into our education system a bit more, and actually even into our social media and things. You know, um, it's not hard to learn about these issues. You know, follow a few people that are talking about this issue. Um, you know, just broaden your horizons and. and read a bit wider maybe um, and everybody just taking maybe on Earth Day everyone can commit to just learning one simple fact and I think that would be a nice way to to help everybody to the movement to, to progress you know that's a good one what fact did you learn today <laughs> no, no, no. I, I knew that was gonna come back on us, isn't it? you know uh, 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 yeah no, I think yeah take a leaf Stop being so judgy and take a leaf out of others. I always, the one I always make mention of is Rwanda. And you'd think of the extraordinary turmoil uh, the, the country like Rwanda has been through. But look at modern Rwanda and what they're doing when it comes to single-use plastics and what they're doing when it comes to picking up waste, etc. It's an extraordinary example of what mm. can be achieved. Because they see it as a resource, you know. Yeah. I was in Malawi just last week and people, uh, children are running up to you asking for your plastic bottle because they get to transport, you know, <laughs> water liquid in that. It's the value to them. We just tuck it in the bin. Do you get to finish the water first? <laughs> well, <Yeah>. Sometimes. <laughs> Goodness, this conversation could go on and on and it's great to have amazing experts here with us right now. Lamise, thank you so much for joining thank us. You. We wish you all the best with your startup and I'm sure it's going to do great. Thank you very much. But I do know that Ahmed has a little something for Maz right now in 60 seconds. Yes, so Maz, we just want to get to know you better in 60 seconds. Uh, it's just going to be a couple of questions. So I'm going to cue the clock in three, two, one. If you weren't in the sustainability space, what would you be doing? Um, is it still sustainability? I love animals. I've always wanted to be, you know, in conservation. I guess it's still related, but, you know, protecting wildlife. Um, so probably that. Okay. Uh, what is the biggest inspiration uh, to do uh, to what you do? The biggest inspiration? Um, seeing other people learn and, um, you know, that light switch moment where people realize and things click. Yeah. Um, educating the younger generation. I think that's really important. Uh, yeah. What's your motto in life and work? My motto? Oh, That'd be I interesting. <laughs> <laughs> um, always do your best, I guess. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, a tip to facilitate an eco-friendly lifestyle? Um, consume less, as Lemmy said. Okay. And what is your go-to place here in Dubai? For food or? Uh, for a hit, uh, re to hit reset. Hit reset. Um, I love um, Banan Beach in, in Rack. Uh, okay. It's a beautiful hotel, Palestinian owned, dog friendly. I um, like that. Love it. These places are great. Mm -hmm. And one last question before the time runs out. Why Dubai? Why Dubai? Dubai has been such a great source of, of opportunities and inspiration. 
Um, it's beautiful, it's got amazing weather, it's got amazing people here, such diversity, and um, yeah, I've had a great life here. So. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank yeah, you. Liz, can't thank you enough for co guest co-hosting today. Thank you very much indeed for all your uh, input and expertise. Thank, thank you for joining you. us. Thank uh, and Lamise, bless you. Thank, thank you very you. much indeed. All the best uh, in you. the future with the latest venture. Right, don't go anywhere. We've still got lots coming up, but I might need a little bit of help with this one because I have to say this, okay? Forgive me for this. Coming up, we be wrapping to closing the night. You know how we do. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs>